from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. Coming up on Ag Day. I have to say that uh, this is a historic night. Details on what the tax package means for farm country and agribusiness cattle markets. Yeah, long term, the good news is these prices are not bad, first of all, comparing them year over year. Sure. They're yeah. fine. Plus, Wendy's planning changes to the beef on its menu and its lights, camera, action in the kitchen for this 4 h Ag Day, presented by the Chevy Silverado. High strength steel for high strength dependability. On this vote, the yeas are 224 and the nays are 201. The motion is adopted without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. Good morning, I'm Clinton Griffiths. So what does it ultimately mean for the ag industry? There have been plenty of questions and speculation while waiting on the final language of the $1.5 trillion tax package. That bill now headed for the president's desk. Farm CPA and tax expert Paul Neifer says these are the highlights. The corporate tax rate is now 21% down from 35. However, Neifer says most farmers only pay 15%, so this may be an adjustment higher depending on the setup. Next. Farms can fully deduct all farm assets purchased between September 28th of 2017 and December 31st of 2022. Section 179 is set at $1 million. Nefer says there's almost an automatic 20% deduction for net farm income. The bill doubles a lifetime estate tax exemption to $11.2 million starting in 2018, and nearly all farmers will be able to deduct all of their interest expense. Net operating losses can only be carried back two years and can only offset 80% of income going forward. Meals are only 50% deductible for farmers who provide meals to employees on site. And there's no more domestic production activities deduction or DPAD. And Section 1031 exchanges are applicable only to real estate. Nefer recommends you take time to sit down with a tax professional and find out what this will specifically mean to your operation. Stock market is up, optimism is high. Coupled with this uh, tax reform, America is ready to start performing as it should have for a number of years. The Democrats have said that the American, will, American people will remember this night. I hope they do, because we passed one of the most important tax breaks in this country's history. President Donald Trump is celebrating the final passage of the Republican tax bill, calling it a, quote, historic victory for the American people. Speaking at his last cabinet meeting of the year, the president said the bill provides a tremendous amount of relief for the middle class. While the president celebrates the major legislative victory Wednesday, the official signing ceremony will take place at a later date. We're bringing the entrepreneur back into this country. We're getting rid of all the knots and all the ties, and we're going to See, you're going to see. You're going to see what happens. And ultimately, what does it mean? It means jobs, 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 jobs. So it's going to be really a very special period of time. We're in a very special period of time, and it's going to be even more so. And thanks to this important historic piece of legislation, I think all of the incentives and the pieces are in place for the American economy to take off. Twelve House Republicans did not vote in favor of the tax bill. Most of them represent urban high-tax states like New York, New Jersey, and California. Voters in those states could see their taxes go up due to a cap on state and local tax deductions. No Republican senators voted against the plan. The House is proposing an $81 billion disaster relief package, which could benefit those impacted by hurricanes and fires this year. If passed, it includes some provisions for other sectors of ag. The package, nearly twice the amount the White House proposed, includes a provision for cotton growers, which would allow cotton growers access to the PLC safety net program. The bill could set a reference price of 36.7 cents per pound for seed cotton, which the bill defines as unginned upland cotton. That includes both lint and seed. Growers say a new safety net is needed. We need some type of safety net, and the regular crop insurance is not doing that as it did several years ago. Michigan Democratic Senator Debbie Stabenow says she's not impressed with the farm bill fixes in the disaster bill, which could remove a $20 million cap on livestock insurance policies. She believes the bill misses an opportunity to repair a broken dairy safety net. 
Also on the Hill, Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa meeting with U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer about the status of NAFTA 2.0 renegotiations. Dealmakers from the three NAFTA countries will reconvene in late January. The senator telling Lighthizer nixing a NAFTA agreement is not an option for U.S. farmers. We don't want lower prices. That's why it's very, very important, as I told Lighthizer, without going into all this stuff about a backup plan, that it will be catastrophic to agriculture if the president would pull out. Don't let it happen. The sixth round of negotiations over NAFTA is scheduled to take place in Montreal on January 23rd. Soybeans may get a closer inspection going forward, especially if they're going to China. U.S. officials saying they will impose stricter quality control on soybean exports to China at the request of Beijing. The government there says it's concerned about foreign material like weed seed finding its way to the country. The move could stop or slow down some American shipments. The new standard sets impurity levels below 1%, which is half current levels. Loads with higher foreign material will need further cleaning before being shipped. The changes start January 1st. Mike Hoffman joins us once again on this first day of winter. He has today's crop comments and wind forecast. Good morning, Clinton. Some folks in farm country are sure getting into the Christmas spirit. Ryan Heinegger in Des Moines County, Iowa, says his kids are having a little fun with their 4-H heifer while waiting in line for the weigh-in last Saturday. Now, taking a look at the uh, wind speed forecast, you can see from the central plains all the way back through the southwest, it's going to be pretty windy. There's this morning, there's uh, the middle of the day, and as we head through the end of the day, you can see that's really going to be the, the main area. Farther east of the Mississippi, you're just not going to see a whole lot of wind. A little bit there in the Ohio and Tennessee valleys during the day tomorrow. Uh, there's uh, tomorrow morning, and you can see a lot of the wind dying down across the plains and even into the southwest. Most of those higher wind speeds moving down into Mexico. We'll have a look at your forecast coming up, but first here are some hometown temps. Farm Journal on Air is the go-to app for American agriculture. Ag Day, AgriTalk, U.S. Farm Report, and more. 24-7 access to all of your favorite shows, TV and radio. In your hands, on demand. Farm Journal on Air. Download the app today. All right, when we come back, we'll check the holiday cattle markets and discuss direction, expectations for 2018. And in Drover's TV, fast food giant Wendy's making some changes to its recipe for success, plus cooking for the holidays. I'm Charles Denny. The Tennessee 4-H'er has her own cooking show on local TV, and she's whipping up some holiday treats. That story from Carthage, Tennessee, coming up on Ag Day. Receive a free trial of the Daily Grain Plan newsletter from Roach Ag Marketing. Text ROACH to 31313. Start your subscription. In agribusiness, wheat markets helping to lead corn higher during early trade. Let's see how things closed in the floor of the scene in Chicago. Pork prices were rising and that really got the market up off the ground and it actually it opened higher, it came back down and then went higher still. So the market is still looking very strong. Uh, the demand really remains strong in spite of the fact that there's the swollen hog supply. It really has been amazing over the last couple of weeks that we know that the, uh, the hog weights have been higher, the, the herds have been bigger. Uh, all, all of that, uh, the supply chain has been full and yet the market still remains pretty strong. The pork cutouts were higher and uh, you know, that's really what has helped the market as well. I mean, right now there's been a bigger demand for the fresh cuts in the ribs and uh, all that. And perhaps the, with the colder weather uh, as we approach uh, the holiday season, uh, that might be really what's helping the market. And so for now, the market looks good. Even though we're in a little bit of a channel, it is strong. And we expect to see a lot more choppy market just the way it is now for the next couple of weeks, certainly to the end of the year. That's all from the floor at the CME Group here in Chicago. I'm Virginia McGathy. Here at the Agribusiness Desk today, we have Elaine Cub, author of Mastering the Grain Markets. Well, we won't talk grains today. Let's talk cattle. Okay. Uh, the cattle markets, as we've ended this year, have been kind of interesting to watch, to say the least. Absolutely. They've been kind of wild. Uh, since November 1st, the live cattle futures have fallen almost 10%, I want to say. Mm. And that has been surprising, I think, given the actual strength in the cash market. So that's been too bad to see that. But I think finally this week, they've sort of found a level just below 120 where they might ta you know, stabilize. And I think that's something that we should really look for in the next few weeks, or certainly in the next few months, as the packers, the weights of the cattle actually coming into the packers will start to fall during the winter. Yeah. So I think there's potential for some bullish movement in these live cattle contracts. Yeah, even as we start 2018, 
2018 and this herd continues to grow. Uh, as you look a little further out into 2018, what are you seeing on the horizon? Yeah, long term, the good news is these prices are not bad, first of all, comparing them year over year, sure, they're right. fine. And I think that trend, that longer term trend should continue because when you think of the retail customer, not just in this country, but in most of the developed countries, Europe, Japan especially, sure. the global economic strength has been coming from developed countries more than the developing countries. So a premium product like beef, the, the good prime cuts of beef, <laughs> that's, right. that's well positioned to take advantage of this global economic recovery. Yeah, you don't think pressure from the rest of the protein sector is going to eat into that price at all? Or is it kind of all boats rise here? I think you, you're pointing to a really interesting point there. When the when the grocery store customer goes to the to the rack and does see probably cheaper pork available because of the supply story, sure, the very sure. large supply of hogs that we have in this country, that is something that could limit the upside, certainly, for beef contracts. So one thing that you're watching for a living. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Appreciate it. We'll be back with more Ag Day in just a minute. For more marketing advice, you can find Elaine's book, Mastering the Grain Markets, How Profits Are Really Made, on Amazon and elsewhere. Ag Day, brought to you by Top Third Ag Marketing. Farmer first, with a plan for every market. Welcome back to Ag Day. Meteorologist Mike Hoffman here on this first day of winter, and we do have snow in the forecast in parts of the country. Yeah, we do. A couple of systems, as you can see there. The real cold air is that cold front in western Canada right now. And that Arctic air will slowly spread south and then east, overtaking most of the lower 48 by next week. Uh, so this is going to be a very cold blast of air for most of the lower 48 through Christmas week. Here's the way things look uh, this morning. Like Clinton said, an area of snow there in the western Great Lakes, an area of snow in the central portions of the Rockies, putting the maps into motion. You can see how we also have a cold front in central Florida moving into southern Florida. And not much moisture with that, but a few hit and miss showers and thunderstorms. And then you can see the uh, snow spreads through the central and northern portions of the Great Lakes by later today. Kind of snow coming to an end in the uh, central Rockies, but snow developing with that really cold blast of air in the northern Rockies as we head through tonight and into the first part of tomorrow. We'll start with some snow in the eastern lakes in the New York and uh, northern Pennsylvania, maybe even a little ice on the southern fringe of that snow. That will move into New England as we head through uh, the latter parts of the day. Southern portions of this system start, starts to moisten up then. And we see some areas of rain developing once again in the southern portions of that drought area from southern Arkansas into northeastern Texas by late in the day tomorrow. Precipitation estimate past 24 hours. A lot of it has been in the southeast. Adding in the next 36, you'll see that light area of moisture, mainly snow, moving through the Great Lakes into the northeast. And you'll see the redevelopment of moisture in parts of Louisiana, Texas, southern Arkansas as we head through the uh, latter parts of the day tomorrow. Now, take a look at snowfall estimates past 24 hours. Most of it's been in the Rockies or spreading eastward across the far northern plains. We'll uh, spread that snow even farther east into the northern and central Great Lakes and much of New England as we head through the next 36 hours or so. High temperatures today, pretty mild in Texas. The really cold air is mainly in Canada. A little bit of it's touching uh, New England as we start the day today. We can see highs in the teens and 20s through the northern tier of states. Low temperatures tonight still very mild from Memphis southward, but the colder air starting to approach as we head through tomorrow morning and through the day tomorrow. You can see high temperature in Billings only 16 and much colder air to the north will slowly spread southward over the next few days. Here's the jet stream and here's why we say that. You can see how it uh, brings a direct shot of Arctic air over this weekend and into next week into the eastern parts of the country. And even though the jet stream relaxes for a short period of time there, the cold air is heavy and it's tough to move away. And so it, it goes farther than you think and it'll stay longer than you think. And we have another shot coming for the middle of next week. So this is a cold pattern for much of the country, especially east of the Rockies, but even in parts of the Rockies. That's a look across the country. Now let's take a look at some local forecasts. First of all, for Provo, Utah, cloudy with a bit of snow today. High temperature around 30 degrees. Springfield, Illinois, mild with clouds and a few peaks of sunshine, high 51. And Augusta, Maine, good deal of sunshine. It'll be colder, though, with a high around 20. Our Drover's TV report is next with a look at changes to Wendy's policy on antibiotic use. And this Tennessee teen is cooking up something special for the holidays. Ag Day. Brought to you by Prosaro Fungicide from Bayer. 
Grover's TV on Ag Day is brought to you by QLF. For 40 years, QLF has been proud to support American farmers that feed the world. In news from our partners at Drovers, the latest sterling profit tracker puts feeder margins at a positive $99 per head. And that's up compared to the week prior, boosted by a $2.50 rally in cash-fed cattle. The five-area cash price was just shy of $120 per hundred. Beef packer margins were also positive at $85 per head, but down a bit due to lower cutout prices. Wendy's fast food chain has announced plans to reduce antibiotics in its beef supply. Beginning in 2018, it will source about 15% of its beef from producers that have committed to a 20% reduction of Tylosin. Tylosin is the only antibiotic medically important for humans that is routinely fed to cattle. The company will increase the amount of beef purchased from these producers and those following similar management practices. Wendy says it has already eliminated all antibiotics important to human medicine from chicken production, something the company pledged to do last year. With 6,500 stores, Wendy's is the world's third largest fast food hamburger chain. Henderson says Wendy's latest move comes a little more than a week after the Food and Drug Administration released a report noting that U.S. sales and distribution of antibiotics approved for use in food animals fell 10% in 2016. More than half of the largest 25 fast food and fast casual restaurant chains in the U.S. now have policies in place that either limit or eliminate the use of antibiotics in the production of meat and or poultry that they serve. Plenty of kids like to cook, but how many can boast about their own TV show to share those special recipes? Ag Day, brought to you by the Enlist Weed Control System. More weed control, less drift and volatility, maximum yield potential. In the Country, sponsored by Kubota. See the hardest working tractors in ag at Kubota.com or visit your local Kubota dealer today. The holidays are a time to enjoy delicious foods. Folks in one Tennessee town only have to turn on their TVs or go online to hear from an expert on the best Christmas dishes. But this cooking show host is a bit younger than you might expect. Charles Denny from the UT Institute of Ag introduces us to a 4-H'er with a flair for food. Hi everybody, welcome to, the, to our next episode of Season with Grace. Here's TV about someone else doing TV, but it's the host and the information that really matter. Welcome to Seasoned with Grace with your host, Grace Harville. So that is how I grease the sides and base of my pants. The Smith County High School Junior hosts her own cooking show for DeKalb Telephone Cooperative TV. On cable and online, she's got followers of all ages and really likes to coach other teens. I just think it's great for kids to know how to cook. It's a essential for life. Seasoned with Grace started her eighth grade year and was part of a 4-H project where she combined her culinary and public speaking skills. And I knew that by doing this segment, it would go hand in hand with my food science project as well as my communications that I've learned in 4-H. And it's just been, it's been a great experience. Grace tapes in her own kitchen and the topic here, cooking holiday foods and a family specialty, coconut cake. That's a treat with a few calories, but she also likes to demonstrate recipes for healthy foods. And doing a lot of these uh, healthy living projects, whether it be going out into the community and making like smoothies for people or doing um, uh, providing activities for people to do, that's just a really important part of the healthy living uh, activities that I'm doing for 4-H in my county. Food is an art form for Grace and a way to showcase her creativity. She also loves the teaching aspect of her show and sharing her love of cooking with others. Grace has been working with food and 4-H most of her young life. Her 4-H agent likes her enthusiasm for whatever she tries. Uh, Grace is one of those members that when I came in, she kind of told me how Smith County 4-H worked and she's been a huge help of, you know, helping us get off the ground running and she's a huge part of our community club. Grace plans to keep producing the show. After all, food doesn't care how old you are. And when you're great in the kitchen and able to communicate that knowledge to others, the results are delicious. This is Charles Denny reporting. All right, full disclosure here. Charles Denny says he can vouch that coconut cake was just as delicious as it looked. 
And that's all the time we have this morning. We're sure glad you tuned in and started your day with us. From all of us here at Ag Day, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Have a great day. Ag Day, brought to you by Ram Commercial, America's longest-lasting heavy-duty pickups.